you may have just learned that you're going to be caretaking for uh, someone that's going to be on a trach or need a ventilator. And whether that's your child or elderly or maybe you're going to nursing school and you're interested in pulmonary. This video is going to help you understand a few terms that go along with the ventilator. When you go through your training for your ventilator, you are going to learn about three terms that are very important. PEEP, PIP, and pressure support. What do those terms mean? How does it relate to the ventilator? And how does it relate to the person that you're caring for? Stick around to the end of the video where I will give you an example that Amanda from Riley gave me that really helped me understand visually what these all mean and how they work together. Back in April of 2023, we were told that our baby Jimmy was going to need to be trach vented. Part of his rare genetic mutation, TRNT1, led to some medical complications that caused our need for this. At first, it was a very scary idea of even getting the trach. It was something that we weren't sure if we even wanted to move forward with. At the time, it seemed so scary and daunting and you had no idea what you were getting yourself into but looking back on it it was so worth it and it has helped jimmy thrive and we wouldn't be where we're at now without it and just a quick word of encouragement you can totally do this if i can you can first and foremost let's just go over the definitions pip is peak inspiratory pressure and peep is positive end expiratory pressure peep is also often referred to as baseline and then pressure support is exactly how it sounds the amount of pressure that is given to inflate the lung starting out you have a line at the very bottom this line at the bottom represents a collapsed lung zero pressure zero air zero oxygen there's nothing it's completely flat and then you have a line above that this is the patient's baseline now the space in between rock bottom or collapsed lung and the baseline is your peep or your end pressure. Now this PEEP or the end amount of pressure is meant to keep the lung from getting to a collapsed point. Uh, as we breathe, we take air in and then we breathe air out. But when we breathe out, we never get down to zero. We always keep some oxygen left in our lungs. Now there's another line on top of this one and it looks something like this. And this line represents a breath. And at the top of this breath is your PIP or your peak pressure, the max amount of pressure that gets put into your lungs. There's the words in case it got confusing. Peep, pip, end pressure, baseline, peak of your breath, peak pressure. Now, oftentimes you'll hear peep as like this term used to describe moving forward or progressing. Um, if you first start out with like a peep of 13, which is a little bit higher of a number, and then you'll slowly work your way down to a peep of eight. Now, what's the difference between those two things? A peep of 13 will keep more end pressure oxygen inside the lung, which will increase oxygenation, and that higher pressure will reduce the risk of a collapsing lung. But with that higher peep carries a higher risk of damage to the lungs. So you want to get down to a lower peep. So as your child or patient progresses, you will want to slowly lower this peep level to see if they can tolerate it, to see if they still oxygenate well, to lower the risk of a lung injury. But you also don't want to jump down too fast and cause a collapsed lung. Not just whenever you want, with the approval of a doctor, when it's safe for the patient, and when the lung is healing or healed. Now us as healthy adults, we range from a peep of like four to six. So that gives you an idea of where someone is supposed to be versus where they are on a ventilator. And our son Jimmy is on a peep of eight. The last term that we haven't talked about is pressure support. And that is the space in between peep and pip because that is the amount of pressure needed to support the lung. The amount of pressure needed to get from your baseline to your peak. So if you need to know the calculation of what your pressure support is, all you need to do is take your PIP minus your PEEP and then you have pressure support. I have awful handwriting, I'm so sorry. This will hopefully help you when you walk into your class or your training that you'll actually have an idea of what these terms are ahead of time and you might be able to show off just a little bit. So on to the promised visual example. A balloon. When we were going through our training, Amanda down at Riley Children's Hospital is amazing and she gave this example and as a visual learner this was the thing that really helped me grasp what this meant. Those little charts and lines were helpful but I was still kind of confused. 
A balloon is a perfect example of a lung. It holds oxygen and it can take oxygen in and it can take oxygen out. This would be an example of that bottom line, a collapsed lung. There's no oxygen, there's no air in here. This would be an example of the PEEP, the end pressure, the smaller amount of air that is left in the lung. The reason it is so important that oxygen is left inside of our lungs is simple because it is so much harder to go from zero or a collapse to your end pressure or even a little bit of air. If you've ever blown up a balloon, you know that the hardest part is just getting the darn thing started. Getting from here to bigger is much easier. And it's the same thing with our lungs. If your lung is collapsed, it takes an insane amount of pressure to push open that lung. But if oxygen is kept in that lung like it's supposed to, then it's easier the next time that you go to take a breath. So this amount of air represents your end pressure, your PEEP. <sighs> And this amount of air is going to represent your full breath, your max filled lung, your peak pressure. So if you're a visual learner like me, you can think about the difference between your peep, pip, and pressure support in the term of a balloon. This is your pip. This is your peep. And the amount of air that left and that will need to be put back in, that difference, is your pressure support. But that's a quick review of the three main terms that you're gonna to need to know when you learn about ventilators. If this video helped you in any way, it'd be very helpful if you could uh, subscribe, like the video, share it with someone. If you would like to follow along with my son Jimmy's journey uh, through TRNT1, trach life, all of that stuff, or my journey as being a medical dad, or just be a part of this community, again, subscribe. Hopefully that never happens to your lung. Oh, there's my lung. <laughs>